be honored here tonight? Um, it felt um, very good, which feels like a very la lazy way to describe it, but that's how it felt. Um, uh, I'm just grateful that there were many times where things didn't make sense. Um, and now in hindsight, things like this make those things make sense. And so I'm, I'm very appreciative, very grateful. And um, it, was, it was a really great night. Talk about the importance of sharing your story to help others in the mental health. I think um, sharing any story is uh, the most important thing. I think um, naturally we're storytellers and um, I don't know, I remember as I was meeting with um, professionals over the past year, uh, I realized that kids have all these posters of these great heroes who are you know, big and muscular and in these um, beautiful poses that make them look strong and powerful. Um, but I would really like a hero who is um, sitting on the curb, broken, um, worn out and beaten. Because um, I, I feel that way much more than I feel like a, a poster child. And um, that's the kind of hero I want. So I think that's what people need to talk, uh, make themselves real, fully um, remove the, the 2D caricatures and make these things fully fleshed out and real. And that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. So very important. What is the biggest thing you've learned since you've come out with, this, with your mental health story? Um, I don't know. I would just say um, you'd be surprised how many people um, are there to catch you. And you won't realize that until you, until you take a stumble, until you take a fall. And um, I think, uh, I think uh, we don't allow ourselves to be loved. We, uh, I know um, for a long time, I didn't, for many days, I still don't, um, but try as best we can to let ourselves be loved and, and to love others as best we can. Um, easier said than done, of course, but. I know you've continued to remain around the team this year. Kind of what has your role been with the team? What's that been like? I like to, I don't know if this is uh, an adequate or appropriate definition, but I like to imagine myself as a bard in Dungeons and Dragons. And um, I just want to be there to increase the morale of the team. And um, like bards like play music for their heroes. So I just hope that I can be um, on the sideline helping my teammates, helping my friends. I'm so happy. Um, on the top of my mind right now, I think of Donovan Jackson, who's a sophomore playing left guard like I did. And um, there's nothing I want more than to see him be successful. And uh, I will always be in the corner of my friends. And um, I'm just I'm beyond happy to, to be able to do that. How does that help you to be around them and to get to still be a part of a team? Massively. Uh, I would think um, I would not be who I am without my friends. So to not be around them would make me less of myself. And um, being around them every day makes me a better version of myself and um, some of the best humans on the entire planet that I've been able to spend time with. And Ryan Day introduced you tonight. Just what has he continued to mean to you as you go through his journey? He's just been uh, a tremendous leader. And I think if you ask um, any guy on that team, they would agree the same. Um, I think it's very easy for that not to be the reality. That is perhaps the reality at a lot of places. Um, but I think Coach Day, um, tries hard to care about his men and um, that means a lot to me um, and I'm very grateful for that. If there's one thing you want people to take away from tonight, what would that be? Um, I guess one, uh, hug your moms. That seems to be a common theme. Um, and um, I would say two, I would, uh, something I've said before, um, I think we we feel small in the presence of love, but we feel small in the presence of fear, but we feel even smaller in the presence of love. And I think that intimidates us away from speaking to the people we care about or being honest with the people we care about. Um, so even if, if, even if it frightens you, um, take a risk and dare to love and to be loved. And um, you'd be surprised how many problems that solves. Hey, I know your motto is Doom Spirit Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about how you kind of found that motto? And I think I found it like in an old Latin translation book and I thought it was a really great phrase um, and I just think it's tremendous how Spiro and Sparrow uh, just a one letter difference between breathing and hoping and um, just the idea that so long as I've got breath in me I'm gonna hope and um, I just think I think it's a beautiful phrase in a beautiful language and it concisely says something really beautiful as well so I think it's a great motto.
And then I know obviously from the mom, I don't know how close you guys are. Can you just talk a little bit about how you know she helped you and was there yeah. throughout the process? Um, she was just a great parent. I don't, I don't think any kid, I don't even think a young man, and not even me right now fully can understand a parent's love until I become a parent. Um, but I was, I was able to. Uh, there's no worse feeling than seeing your mother cry. I think that gives you some sort of inkling of a small percentage of how much uh, your parents care about you. And uh, my mother was fantastic. She was always supportive of me. And um, there were things that, that, that we had to fix and grow in our relationship. Um, and we had a great relationship even. Um, but mental health, suicide, depression are things that can strain those or pervert them and adulterate them into things that are unimaginable and unrecognizable. And um, because of that, we made our relationship even stronger. And so she's been fantastic. And um, I would say I'm the luckiest son in the world. And I think every son feels that way. So.